the first talk of our last session is by Lin Yuan Yu, and she'll tell us about cohomology of line bundles or flag varieties. Okay, thanks for, for the uh, introduction. So yes, uh, uh, I will talk about the cohomology of line bundles and flag varieties. So first, uh, let me explain what flag varieties are. Uh, so, so in this talk, assume, let assume K is an algebraically closed field and, uh, and let V be an n-dimensional vector space over K. Uh, then the flag variety, so this is the classical flag, flag variety of this vector space. It's just that the set of, uh, of these uh, full flags, which means a chain of, uh, chain of vector spaces, sub-vector spaces, equipped with a natural structure of an algebraic variety. So more precisely, uh, it is a, a closed sub variety of the uh, of a product uh, a closed sub variety of a product of thrust many varieties and uh, and uh, this is uh, so this is uh, so so also we uh, so we can also prove that uh, this this variety equals to the quotient of sln by b where b is a, is the subgroup of sln consisting of uh, lower triangular matrix, uh, matrices and so so the, so the, this uh, so we call this uh, the flag variety of SLN, <coughs> and uh, more generally, so whenever we have a reductive algebraic group G and a Borel subgroup, uh, we can equip uh, the quotient space G over B with a natural structure of a projective variety, and we call this the flag variety of G. And uh, and so uh, uh, then uh, so uh, uh, let me recall that uh, so whenever we have a, a variety, an algebraic variety. We can define the uh, Picard group uh, on it, which is the uh, so uh, as a set is the set of isomorphism classes of line bundles on X, and the group structure is induced by tensor product. And uh, in particular, uh, so so for flat variety, uh, we know what the gr Picard group looks like. So we know uh, uh, what are the isomorphism uh, classes of line bundles. Uh, more precisely, so so let T be a maximal torus. In, uh, 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 containing in the Borel, uh, then the Picard group of G over B is just isomorphic to the Carter group of T, denoted by X of, X of T. And let me give some uh, explicit examples. So if G equals to SLN plus uh, one, so which is the classical, uh, so here we are, so we, are, we are talking about the classical flat varieties. Uh, then the Picard group of the flat variety is isomorphic to Z, uh, Z to the power of N. And, uh, in particular, for n equals to one, so we are talking about uh, the full flux in, in, in the two-dimensional vector space, which is just uh, the one-dimensional projective space, and it is well known that that is Picard group is isomorphic to Z. And uh, and uh, once we have uh, we know all these uh, line bundles, we can talk about uh, cohomology of line bundles. So one of my uh, main research interests interest is to understand the structure of the cohomology of line bundles on flat varieties. So, uh, so let, let us fix some notation. So for an arbitrary weight, so, so I call XT the weight lattice of, of this group. So for an arbitrary uh, weight uh, denoted by H high mu, so the ith cohomology of the line bundle corresponding to, uh, uh, to this weight mu. And, uh, and, uh, and one can show that uh, H high mu has a natural structure of a G module. So, so that, so, so yeah. Uh, I'm a representation theorist, and uh, that's why uh, I'm interested in this. And uh, uh, alternatively, we can also define this H high mu uh, uh, by the uh, i derived functor of the induction functor from B to G uh, of the uh, one-dimensional B module of weight mu. So, uh, so we can prove that these two these two definitions uh, are, are isomor isomorphic to each, naturally isomorphic, and. Uh, and uh, and uh, using the second definition, it is uh, easy to see that uh, this uh, this object, uh, so this vector space, uh, k vector space, is also a G module. And uh, so let uh, so before uh, talking about more details, let me first uh, uh, talk about some motivation about this problem. So so from the definition itself, uh, we can already see that uh, these things uh, uh, are uh, are natural and. Uh, are uh, interesting and fundamental objects to study in algebraic geometry, but uh, also uh, once we put 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 them into into the picture of the representation theory of of G of algebra of a reductive algebraic group, uh, so they will carry even more significance. Uh, more precisely, 
So for each dominant weight, uh, so mu, uh, we, uh, the simple, the, the unique simple G module of highest weight mu is the, is the unique simple sub module of H0, H0 mu. So, uh, and moreover, uh, the altern uh, alternative sum of the character of H i mu is given by Wiles character formula. So, so this means that if we ca we can have a complete understanding of the structure of uh, these these objects H i mu's, so this will definitely help us to understand the character of simple modules, which is uh, one of the most important questions in the representation theory of algebraic groups in positive characteristics. And uh, yeah, so. So first, uh, so the, the, the easy, easy case, when the characteristic of the base field is zero, then we, uh, we already have a very complete answer. So uh, like uh, since at least half a century ago, so by the, <coughs> by the uh, Borel waste theorem. So, uh, so, so, uh, so, so this theorem states that, uh, states that uh, so when, when we, whenever we have a dominant waste, uh, then we only have H0, and the H0 is, is just this, uh, this simple module. And uh, uh, whenever uh, lambda is uh, in, in an orbit of, uh, in the uh, orbit of the dominant, uh, of, of a dominant weight, uh, then we only have H, uh, HI, uh, so the i cohomology uh, of, of this weight, and i equals to the length of, the, of, the, of this element in the wild group, uh, where, the, where the, uh, the length means that uh, the, the, the smallest inter, uh, positive integer L, such that uh, W can be written as, uh, as the product of, product of L, simple reflections. And, uh, and if mu is not in the orbit of the dominant chamber, so the, the, uh, the, uh, all the cohomologies vanish for, for, for this weight. So, so this might seem a little bit technical, but I will give you a photo, uh, a picture to illustrate the situation. So this is uh, the picture for SL3. Ah, so, so you, uh, you should notice that here we are using the dot, uh, dot uh, action, which means that uh, the origin, so instead of uh, taking the, the, so the origin is minus zero instead of zero. So, and, uh, and uh, these are the two, uh, two uh, simple roots of SL3, which are called uh, alpha and beta. And uh, this is the dominant chamber. So, uh, so for SL3, and so here we only have H0. Uh, and then uh, these are uh, these are so this is uh, as uh, as alpha dot uh, the dominant chamber, and this is as as beta dot uh, the dominant chamber. So in these two regions, in these two chambers, we we have non-vanishing H1, and similarly here we have non-vanishing H2, and uh, in the anti-dominant chamber we have uh, H3. And uh, so, 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 uh, so that this problem in characteristic zero is completely solved. And you can also see that, uh, so for, uh, for, you can also see from the railway book or from this picture that uh, for a fixed mu, so uh, there, there can uh, only be at most the one non-vanishing cohomology. Uh, right now let's move to positive characteristic. So, so the, the bad news is that there is no more railway bot. And uh, uh, so, so it was uh, in 1978 that uh, uh, people first uh, uh, actually uh, uh, found the, the, the example, uh, maybe, so maybe uh, someone did it earlier, but anyway, so in 19, 19, uh, 1978, uh, Al Griffith uh, uh, found the, uh, the necessary and sufficient condition for SL3. Uh, the, uh, so so he, uh, Griffith uh, det completely determined the vanishing uh, behavior of uh, those cohomologies for SL3. And, uh, and so, so uh, as I said, uh, uh, so in, in characteristic zero case, so in this chamber we have H0, and these two we have H1, these two we have H2, and uh, these we have uh, H3. But once we move to a positive characteristic, so, so this picture shows the case for uh, where P equals to three. And, uh, and in these red regions, uh, we will have both uh, H1 and H2 non-zero. So this, uh, this was first proved by, uh, by Griffith. And uh, so, so uh, in particular, we can see that uh, the, the Borel wave bot cannot be correct in this in, in positive characteristic, uh, except in this, this very tiny region, P-restricted region. And uh, so, uh, so let me list some of the previous results in, in, this, uh, in this topic. 
So, so as in characteristic zero, we still have Kampf's vanishing theorem. And uh, uh, which means that, uh, so H zero of mu is, uh, is not zero if and only if mu is uh, dominant. And, uh, and then, uh, so Anderson proved, uh, found the necessary and sufficient condition for uh, the vanishing behavior of H one. And so in particular, uh, combine this result uh, with, uh, uh, with uh, uh, set duality, we can, uh, so, so Anderson recovered uh, the, the result by Griffith for SL3. And Anderson also proved that if non-zero H1 mu has a simple circle, so which means it, it has a unique simple sum module. But other than that, he didn't, uh, he didn't, uh, so in this, so this is uh, the only information about the, the G module structure of H1 mu in that article. And, uh, and then uh, Janssen, so in, uh, in between uh, 19, 1978 and 1979, uh, Janssen uh, proves uh, the existence of a generic decomposition of H0, of uh, H0 mu for mu generic in the lowest P2, uh, P, P square alcove. And uh, so, so I will show a, a picture uh, after, after, this, after this slide. And for mu and the mu dominant and uh, not too close to the wall, uh, he also proved that H zero mu has a p filtration, and uh, this uh, so this method uh, method uh, was general, uh, generalized by these several different groups of people uh, around in around 1980s, and uh, and then uh, in uh, 2006, uh, Duncan discovered uh, uh, obtained a recursive formula for uh, the characters of H i mu for g equals to SL three. And uh, so first let me show, show you some. Uh, so this is uh, still the, the, the picture for SL3. So I just want to summarize what we know uh, before for SL3. So this is the, P, uh, the, the lowest P square alcove. And uh, the color region is, uh, the, is the so-called generic region where we have generic uh, decomposition. And uh, these are the, the orbits by the, uh, by the well group of, of, the, of the same region. So, so Janssen and uh, those uh, different groups of people proved that inside uh, these uh, six tiny region, we have a, so, uh, uh, also inside uh, those six tiny color region, uh, we have a generic decomposition. And uh, so, so these are all in the, uh, in the lowest P square alcove. So, so nothing, uh, nothing else, uh, not, nothing uh, beyond that. And then Janssen also proved that here for those with dominant thing, and uh, we, we can have P filtrations. So, uh, and also by, by set duality, we can get the, the information here. And, uh, and we know the vanishing uh, behavior uh, uh, of those H I mu's by Griffith. And, uh, and other than that, for example, for, for ways here, 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 and here, here. So basically we knew uh, uh, almost nothing about the G module structure and uh, and uh, so, so uh, in my thesis, I gave uh, an explicit description of the G module structure of, uh, of all these H I mu's for G equals to SL3. So a complete description for always, for, for all I and all mu. And, uh, and so this dis description is quite, is quite complicated. Uh, and uh, in particular, it uh, contains a generalization of a modified version of Janssen's P filtration that works for every I, so every H I. So original Janssen's P filtration was defined for H0. And um, uh, in particular, it gives a Jordan holder filtration of these modules. And also it, it independently recovered, uh, recovers uh, Duncan's character formula. And, uh, and the, this is a glance of what the main theorem looks like. And if you're interested, you can, you can check this article offline. Okay, that's all I want to talk about. Thanks. Any questions? I actually have one question. Um, so you're talking about SL3. Is, is there anything special that happens if the characteristic is equal to three? No. Mm, so, uh, uh, so in fact, so the results uh, so works for p, uh, p equals to two or three. So even for two. So, so for example, this. Uh, so. Almost all the main results uh, in, in, in this article works for every characteristic, even for two. And, uh, but, uh, so if you uh, look really closely, the proof will be different when P equals to two and three. So because, so uh, you, you can see it from this photo. So this picture, uh, uh, 
so when p equals to two and three, uh, so some something weird happened in the in the bottom p squared alcohol. <laughs> But the, but the 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 result the final result uh, works for every characteristic, but the proof uh, is a little bit different for p equals to two and three. And what uh, what are the chances of changing three in terms of the SL three to to a bigger number? Ah uh, yes, uh, uh, I also have some partial re results on 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 these things. So for SLN, so I. I, I could find some description for so so for example for SL three so so this this description for all mu and all i and uh, and for SLN I have some partial results that only for so it works for certain i and very uh, very few mu and but but uh, so uh, if you look at uh, this this statement you can see that it doesn't seem to be limited to SL three so. So the statement seems like it can be generalized, but uh, the proof counts. So, <laughs> so maybe I haven't found the, the proof. What's holding you up? Is it is it uh, just some combinatorics, or or is it? Uh, yes. Yeah, so it's uh, yeah. It's uh, it's uh, also it's uh, so so there's uh, there's another main result before this uh, this theorem so that 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 I needed uh, for to prove this and. Uh, so that thing is uh, something called a uh, three. Uh, so it's a two-step filtration for uh, those regions uh, discovered, those region red regions discovered by Griffith, and uh, this is something very unique uh, in SL three. And I tried uh, so I tried uh, to to see if uh, something similar happens for SLN, even for SL four. I couldn't. So. <laughs> okay. Yep. Thanks. Did you look at uh, uh, this type of question in the case of a, a quantum group uh, at a root affinity? Not yet. Sorry. Okay, let's thank the speaker again.